Star Wars vintage mini rigs. Did you like these as a kid? Some of them weren't even in the movie. So how many of them exactly are there? And are they essential to a vintage collection? Today, we go over all of them and discover the history of why they exist in the Star Wars Kenner vintage line. So let's go. Welcome back to the journey. Like them or hate them, mini rigs are a part of the Star Wars Kenner Vintage line. But I do have some questions. Number one, how many are there exactly? Number two, why did Kenner make these? And number three, are they essential to a vintage Kenner collection? Even as a kid, I thought, they aren't Star Wars toys if they aren't seen in the movie. That was one of the reasons I didn't get into the Power of the Force line. I thought it was a Star Wars knockoff. I didn't remember seeing a Man, -a -Man or Barada in the movie. Now, had they made a Tarkin, a Slave Leia, or even the Mos Eisley band, I probably would have gotten into the Power of the Force line. Now, I remember seeing some of the mini rigs in the movies, ones like the Tripod Cannon or the Radar Dish. Heck, even the Vehicle Maintenance Energizer. I could get behind that because of how often we saw the crews working on the Starfighter and the Falcon broke down so many times that, yeah, I could totally see Han getting chewy this for life day. There you go, buddy. But what about the mini rigs that were never seen in the movie? Well, as a kid, I never wanted them because I never saw them in the movie. As a kid, I wanted to relive the moments when Luke flew the X-Wing and was being chased by Vader in the TIE Fighter. I wanted to have Slave One escape Bespin with Han Solo to deliver him to Jabba. But with the mini rigs that weren't in the movie? To me, putting one of the heroes in a small ship was the equivalent of putting Michael Knight in a Dotson and not Kit. So why did Kenner make the mini rigs when most of them were never seen in the movies? According to Rancho Obi-Wan founder and author of From Concept to Screen to Collectible, Steve Sansweet quotes Kenner designer Mark Boudreau as saying, if you didn't see any of the mini rigs in Star Wars films, that's because they were always just at a camera range. The Kenner designers were given the task of using George's designs from the movie and creating new designs that would fit in the Star Wars universe and that George himself would approve of. And to a toy designer, that must have been heaven. But the two main reasons why Kenner made the mini rigs, number one, to make cheap vehicles that would fly off the store shelves to capitalize on the Star Wars craze. Number two, to compete with the variety of toys that kids got with other lines such as G.I. Joe, Transformers, and He-Man. The price point at that time for a Star Wars Kenner ship or vehicle was in the range of $19.95 to $49.95. So the challenge from Lucasfilm and the Kenner management to all the toy designers make them $4.95 to no higher than $9.95 at retail. So with that challenge, the Kenner designers used parts made out of styrene, some recycled parts from other toy lines, a heck of a lot of glue, no paint, but instead using sticker sheets that had been created from other Star Wars toys to keep manufacturing costs down. And they came up with these six mini rig prototypes. An interesting vehicle was the large bike that looks like Batman's bike from the Dark Knight series and also Princess Leia's walking throne, both of which were rejected. But if you look at the walking throne, that idea did resurface for Newt Gunray's walking chair in episode one. So with the new design in hand, the concept designers handed them over to the product designers to refine them and make them production ready. And the main series of rigs started with three waves and each rig was numbered two through eight. And I guess they didn't want to use number one because that was already taken by Slave One and you don't want to tick Boba off. They were released all over the world, but not in order of number. So let's go over the first three waves. Wave one. MLC-3, the mobile laser cannon, released in 1981, the mini tank with a plastic dome. This was actually a throwback to early concept designs of what the Imperial walkers were supposed to look like before it was decided to put legs on them. MTV-7, the mobile terrain vehicle, released in 1981. I probably see this vehicle the most in vintage toy shops, selling for about 10 bucks. This was also made as a bootleg by Uze, and if you find this boxed, it's worth a small fortune. PDT-8, Personnel Deployment Transport, released in 1981, was probably one of the lamest Star Wars toys out there. Jawas and R2 can fit in there, but regular figures just fell out. But concept designs did mark this as a droid transport, so maybe they should have named it DTV-8, Droid Transport Vehicle. 
And if you're enjoying the content so far, please hit the like button. That does support the channel. And also, please consider subscribing. And please visit thepadawancollector.com where you can see blogs, bonus material, and you can visit the Collector Depot for accessories that you may need for your collection. Wave 2, CAP2, Captivator 2, released in 1982 and was supposed to be Bosk's ship. This one came with a suction cup feature. Bosk is sneaky sneaky. INT4, Interceptor 4, released in 1982. To me, this is the coolest looking of all the mini rigs, and this one was supposed to fit inside the cargo hold of the ATAT. Wave 3, AST5, Armored Sentinel Transport, released in 1982. I remember seeing this in the early 2000s at a toy shop and I really thought it was part of the episode 1 line just because it doesn't look like vintage Star Wars to me at all, but more like a Federation droid type thing. But it was designed for Jabba's goons in Tatooine. ISP-6 Imperial Shuttle Pod released in 1983. Now as a kid, I do remember seeing this and I thought it was pretty cool. And if you couldn't afford the larger and more expensive Imperial Shuttle you got this. Just never bring this to a friend's house who actually had the Imperial Shuttle or you will get rightfully laughed at. After the release of the ISP-6, Kenner dropped the number convention and went with simple names instead, <laughs> starting with the worst looking toy, in my opinion. The Endor Forest Ranger, released in 1984. I didn't know this even existed until I started doing this run a year ago, and I immediately thought of General Grievous's transport bike. Desert Sail Skiff, released in 1984, and was actually a pretty cool vehicle that I could really see one of Jabba's goons using. And since the larger Tatooine Skiff would be released a year later at a higher price point, this offered parents a more affordable option. The One Man Sand Skimmer, 1985. One of the first to be released under the Power of the Force line of toys. It's the first of the body rigs to be introduced and was the first to be available mint on card in the US but boxed for the Tri-Logo European release. And this made an appearance in the Droids cartoon series. Security Scout, 1985. Looking like Ripley from Aliens would use this, if I had one as a kid, I would have absolutely loved it. Even though I would have had to rent the VHS of Return of the Jedi to try and freeze frame to where this was shown in the battle. The last of the mini rigs is the Imperial Sniper, released in 1985. This is one that was also available boxed or carded. And right now on the secondary market, these are super expensive and also hard to find complete and unbroken loose. This mini rig also made an appearance in the droids cartoon. There are also rigs from the droids cartoon like the ATL interceptor vehicle and the side gunner. And we were supposed to get one more mini rig to fit the Millennium Falcon, but since the toy line ended in 1986 officially, we only have these prototypes to look at. But we finally did see it in action in Solo, A Star Wars Story. But what about the rigs I mentioned earlier? Do I consider those mini rigs? Absolutely. So, the tripod laser cannon, vehicle maintenance energizer, radar laser cannon, Ewok combat glider, and the Ewok assault catapult. So, on my collection sheet, I've placed all of the mini rigs listed here in a new section, mini rigs. Now, some of you might say, should I move over the speeder bike? Where does the madness end? Well, the good news is, is that you or me get to call the shots when it comes to my own collection. So if you want to bring the speeder bike over to this list, you can. I'm not, but you can. And this sheet is now available on the padawancollector.com as a downloadable PDF, PowerPoint, or Apple Keynote document. To help me keep creating content like this, please become a YouTube channel member with memberships starting as low as 99 cents a month. You'll get early access to videos before the public does, members only live streams, extra entries into all giveaways and special member shout outs. Just hit the join button below the screen and welcome to the academy. So did you learn anything new about going over this list of the mini rigs? And also, do you agree with my choice of bringing over some of those mini rigs onto my list? Let us all know down there in the comments. But for now, I have a collection to finish, so I'm gonna get two things. And I went to two different shops to get them. 
I took another road trip from San Diego to LA to visit the mother of all toy shops, Frank and Son. And for those of you who have never experienced Frank and Son Collectible Show, here's a link in the corner. I did a detailed walkthrough that you won't find anywhere else. And I even drew a map so you know where everything is exactly. So this time I went and got myself a mini rig and one that I thought was pretty cool, the Desert Sail Skiff. Now the box isn't in the most mint of condition. It has some edge and flapware, but for a display piece, it's awesome. And the main reason why I got this one was that the flap has not been bent or creased and these are often hard to find like this. The litho color is in great shape and it depicts Boba on the main cover. Moving over to the right on the extension flap area, we see Boba and a hoodless Luke as if they are replaying the Sarlacc scene. And on the flap itself, we see other mini rigs that were released in this wave. On the top, we see Claytu Skiff and Nikto. And on the bottom, we see the proof of purchase still intact and the country of origin is Macau. And on the back of the box, we see a wider picture of the whole scene. On the bottom, it's still factory sealed, so we open it from the top. And I always be careful not to bend these flaps all the way back and as little as possible so they don't wear out. They are 40 year old cardboard after all. We see the instruction sheet, which has very good color and not bent or folded over. And there should have been a sticker sheet included, but that isn't in here. And it also comes with the Return of the Jedi mini catalog. And the cardboard insert is missing. And we see the skiff parts itself, but let's make sure all the stickers are on the vehicle itself. I'm missing one sticker from the turret along the rim and one sticker is peeling off, so I either have to get a replacement or apply some E6000 to make that lay flat. The side exhaust stickers are there. The jet port sticker is there. And on the bottom, all three stickers are there. There's a plank feature that slides out, allowing a figure to stand on it, and this one works and isn't loose. The two side fins are attached and unbroken. And there's a gray arm that attaches to the back of the skiff. The sail attaches to the arm. There is a control knob on the bottom that makes the cockpit's turret move and make a clicking sound. And on the turret itself, there should be two trident blasters. So overall, this piece is great to have in my collection. And let's place this inside an acrylic for protection. But I need a character to fly that thing. And I already have a Boba Fett, and I want to check a figure off that list. So this week, I'm getting Nikto. Nikto was first released in 1984 in the second wave of the Return of the Jedi line of toys on the 77A card backs. He comes with the Skiff Vibro Axe and is one of three figures to come with this. Barada and the Canadian Power of the Force release of Yak Face. A Lily Levy staff will be darker gray than the Kenner staff. And we went down to one of my favorite local toy shops, Toy Addicts, and picked up a gorgeous looking Nikto for $35. And looking at it, it has absolutely no paint flaws on it. So I don't want to place the staff in its hands because I would love to send this one in for a grade and get another Nikto for the case. But that's for the grading run. So for now, let's mark off two things. For our new mini rig list, let's mark off the Desert Sail Skiff that we got from Enforce Collectibles at the Frank and Son Collectible Show in LA. And we got that for a respectable $115 even. And let's also mark off the Nikto that we got from Toy Addicts in San Diego for $35 even. And finally, let's place this figure in our collector display case, which we only need four more figures to cross that phase off in our collecting journey. So thanks for going over that little history lesson about the mini rigs and listing all the mini rigs in the vintage Kenner line. And do you think I left any out? And what do you think of the list and what I got today in the desert sail skiff and Nikto? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. That does support the channel. And also, please consider subscribing if you wanna see more Star Wars and collecting content from me. And also, hit that notification bell so you know when episodes go live. I post videos every Sunday with bonus content throughout the week. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.